Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Bean here, and today we're going to go back in time, mostly because I feel like it, um, but the day that this video is going out is actually my birthday, so I kind of felt that I should do something a little bit reminiscent and a little bit, let's think back on the past however many years, as old as I am, and we're not going to talk about that. Um, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to go look at some of the books that started this whole book obsession for me. What this basically sums up is find a snack, find a drink, find something to eat, because it is story time with Bean! <laughs> and yes, that is now a thing. Anywho, moving on. All right, don't forget to take water breaks for that. Anyways, going back to my childhood. Um, I first taught myself to read when I was approximately three or four years old. I uh, basically would memorize the words of books and then recite them, and so that's how I taught myself to read. <laughs> um, started with Dr. Seuss and kind of moved on through there. My parents were really awesome about it and really recognized this um, love of reading and they both kind of shared it too, which was very helpful. And so we started reading books together and the first series, I suppose you could say, that I read with anyone was uh, the line was the Magician's Nephew, the um, Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis. This is the Spanish edition, but the original edition is actually at my parents' house, so I don't have a copy of it. Uh, but my dad and I actually sat down and we read this. So the whole idea was that he would read some and then I would read some, and then we'd sit down and talk about what happened in those chapters that we read because my issue always was and always has been that I skim things and I don't exactly absorb everything that I read. So this was one of the first times he sat me down and we actually like analyzed the book and we looked at what was going on during it. So The Magician's Nephew um, was definitely one of the first books I have fond memories of reading this book. The next series that I recall co-reading, or reading really, with anyone, is I remember reading with my mother the Artemis Fowl series. Now, we read them as they came out, um, similar to several other series. C.S. Lewis was already out, uh, The Chronicles of Narnia were already out when I was little. Um, but we read Artemis Fowl as it came out, and I don't think we ever finished the series because the series wasn't finished by the time we kind of lost interest in it. I don't know if my mom ever finished it or not. Mom, you'll have to let me know. Um, but these are the newer covers. We have all the original, probably first editions, again, at my parents' house because I'm pretty sure Mom would wait until they were released and then pick them up the day that they were released, similar to many other series that it ended up getting into. But I rem remember the bottom of this book, um, there's like a translation thing and she really got me into that and they had me actually translate it. And so after I finished the first book, I translated that and I think it's still written in the original book that I have where I actually wrote down what it said. Uh, I was very proud of myself, so that's cool. Uh, another fond memory. And then just like any other kid of my generation, I have to mention, we also read all of the Harry Potter books together. My mom and I, my dad never got into Harry Potter, which is fine. Um, but my mother would wait and would get me the book the day it was released. And then I could read it after school that day. I won't talk much about Harry Potter. Everyone knows it. We don't touch it right now. Um, but I did want to bring it up because it was such an important part of my childhood. The next series that I know I read when I was younger um, was The Golden Compass by Philip Pullman. This was a series, a trilogy at the time, yeah, a trilogy at the time, that I read. I believe my dad read this one with me, possibly. I don't remember, actually. But I remember having this one, um, this, actually, this exact book. This is the original book that we had, um... I remember having it in a cabinet and reading it the, reading it from there because it was up on the top shelf and asking for it down and remembered really enjoying it. But I also remembered getting very confused by the middle of the second book because I was probably eight or nine when I read this. It, and reading comprehension wasn't exactly my best skill. 
So yeah, but I do plan on rereading this one also. I don't know that I've actually reread it since then. So when I was in fifth grade, um, my mother and I joined a, a mother-daughter book club with a bunch of my school friends and their moms. So it was kind of an excuse. We all would get together and we would all, we would pick a book and we would read it. And then we'd come back and we'd discuss it the next month and pick another book and go on like that. So we had a legitimate book club going there for a while. And then it just ended up becoming a, a, our time to be social because we were never social otherwise. We were not social children. Okay, I was not a social child. Um, but I remember the first book that we read for that book club was Wild Magic by Tamora Pierce, which if you have been on this channel for like more than three videos of me, I have probably mentioned this book. Tamora Pierce has become a staple in my reading and she is really one of the authors that really got me into fantasy worlds and being able to go to different worlds for a while. And then shortly after reading this one, my best friend Anna, Hi, Anna. Um, it, she actually recommended that I read Alana, The First Adventure, which is a, another book from this world that's a different series, but it follows someone um, who we do meet in this book as well, but her childhood, I guess, in a, in a sense, her teenage years. And so this, this, I can blame this is why I super got into reading were these books why I got super into fantasy and why I got into magic. Like, it's these books, let's be honest here. These, to this day, these two books are two of my most treasured items, even though anywhere they might not be worth anything. To me, they are worth everything because it's what started my obsession with books. I now, by the way, have a miniature shrine up on top of one of my bookshelves to Tomorrow Pears, so if you want to see that, let me know. Um, another series that I ended up actually reading because of that book club was Aragon by Christopher Paolini. At least my memory is telling me that. My memory might be slightly faulty, but I remember reading the first two books in this series. I think I read the third one, too. I don't remember. The fourth one wasn't out. We Again, I read these ones as they came out. I'm aging myself here, but that's okay. Um... Not the collector's edition, uh, but um, the original books, again, are at my parents' house. And yeah, we de we definitely read these as they came out. And I remember being very irritated by the end of the second one. Um, so I don't know if I put up a protest, a childish protest, and didn't read the third one. I honestly don't remember, so I'll have to go back and double check on that one. But I remember reading this one also as a child, and this is where my interest in dragons started. So I, I I got into fantasy, I got into dragons, um, and then I got into magical realism. And magical realism for me was this collection of books. So there's three stories in here, all by um, Eva, Eva Ibotson. Eva Ibotson. These are her three books, Witch Witch, The Secret of Platform 13, and uh, Island of the Ants. So I read The Secret of Platform 13 first, and then Witch Witch, and then Island of the Ants. It doesn't matter what order you read them in, they're all standalones. But these three books really got me into the idea that there's magic in our everyday world, and that kind of got me start started on that whole thing. I have since lost the dust jacket. That's how you can tell this is a well-loved book. It was It was like ripped in half. It was not in good shape from what I remember. But I will always keep this book because... This is a book that I think every child should read as well because it explores how just being different doesn't mean that you shouldn't fit in or that you shouldn't have friends or that you shouldn't be there. That there are advantages to being a white witch amongst all of these dark witches. There is an advantage to having magic when no one else does. There is an advantage to all of this. So it's I definitely think that these are the books that um, children should be reading and I will, if I ever have children or nieces, nephews, or honorary children, they will be reading these. So there. Around this time I started picking up um, some other 
YA books, I guess you could say, that really did make an impact on me. The first one being, uh, being Paperquake by, the first one being Paperquake by Catherine Reese. What I remember about this one is that there are earthquakes in, I think this is San Francisco that it takes place, or yeah, San Francisco Bay. Um, and she talks about, like, there's mental puzzles, just like, uh, word word puzzles, word games, and I thought that was so interesting and kind of got, was, for a while I was obsessed with, um, yeah, those kinds of things with the word puzzles. This book also dealt, um, with time travel, I believe, for the first time. It says time travel mystery, but I don't remember a lot of time travel in this book. Um, there were, there was a girl who would see things, so that was interesting. So there, again, there's some magical realism in this one, but I remember the word puzzles and the earthquakes in this one the most, so. Another book that I really got into was Peeled by Joan Bauer. This is a book that follows a journalist, uh, a teenage journalist, like a high school journalist. They're basically, um, uncovering the big bad in the big corporation that's trying to take over all of the small businesses in town, and she's revealing it to the world. And this was probably one of my first, um, intros to any sort of, like, romance in books, because there was a couple in here that they had like their high school romance and it was cutesy and there was a little bit of jealousy and such but I really liked the main character and I kind of wanted to be her and I think this is where my interest in writing came from honestly. I'd be remiss not to talk about this book Black Horses for the King by Anna McCaffrey by Anne McCaffrey This kind of started my obsession with King Arthur. <laughs> uh, this kind of started my obsession with King Arthur and with everything horse related at the time. Um, it basically follows uh, a young boy whose family sells horses and his he ends up joining uh, King Arthur on his initial quest for Camelot and he ends up being the farrier for their their little posse and it's it's really a great story and a really sweet one and one that I do try to read every year um because it's a different point of view and it introduced me to the idea that yeah there can be like these big stories that everyone knows like the King Arthur legends um but you get them from different points of view and I just thought that was so fascinating and to this day I still like aim to write books like this that tell a larger story from a small perspective that you wouldn't think would be important but it turns out to be super essential to the world so i love this book and i still do and everyone should read it and why haven't you read it yet go read now another book that i'm not sure why when i read why i read it um i think it's one that um I got really into wolves for a long while and this book had wolf eyes on the cover and so someone picked it up for me because that's how people used to decide what books to get me which is probably why my reading tastes are all over the place which I love and I'm so happy about it well this is the site by David Clement Davies this is the second book so it's actually the sequel I think to Firebringer not sure I don't remember um, but this is all about a wolf pack, and I don't remember what, what else happens to this wolf pack. Ah! This is all about a wolf pack in Transylvania. Yeah, so, um, yeah, there's magic, there's vampires, there's werewolves, there's all sorts of things in this series, and there's talking animals. The first book was all about a deer that brought fire to the earth or something like that. I don't remember exactly what it was about, but I just, this is, I don't want to say it's a comfort book, but it kind of is. <laughs> so I'll have to reread this one at some point. Now I just keep it around for sentimental sake. In all honesty, I see this one and I remember Transylvania and I remember werewolves and I'm like oh book book yeah I had odd reading tastes as a child one of the other books that we read in our book club that got me into mysteries 
was Crocodile in the Sandbar by Elizabeth Peters. This was the first book in an Amelia Peabody mystery, and I have yet to find the second one, and for some reason never bought it, but I enjoyed this. This was one of the first mysteries I read that took place in ancient Egypt, um, and I love ancient Egypt. I love the concept. Well, it didn't take place in ancient Egypt. It took place on an archaeological dig in Egypt, so kind of like yeah, it, this this wasn't a sci-fi one, really, I don't think. There is a botched kidnapping in here, as well as guns and murder and mystery and theft and all sorts of things happen in this one, and it makes me happy. And yeah, um, this was definitely one of the first mysteries I really got into, other than the Hardy Boys, which I don't have any of the Hardy Boys books here. I read them growing up as well, but I didn't read Nancy Drew. I did not read Nancy Drew, but I did read and collected all of the Hardy Boys books. Um, I didn't really talk about the childhood, like the little, the books that I read when I was a lot littler, when I was first starting to read. Um, like I read all of the Hardy Boys books as basically as they came out too. And I read, um, all of the A to Z mystery books as they came out. I read all of the Magic Treehouse books as they came out. Um, I read the Clue Finders books. Yeah, so I read all of those as well, but these are the books that really have stuck out to me since then. Um, oh, there's more. Not many more, but. And then uh, my dad introduced me, well, I was introduced to The Odyssey somehow. And I don't remember how, but I read The Odyssey and then we read it in high school for a class and I was one of the few that had already read it. And I remember so much like going on and then we highlighted so I will never sell this book because I've actually written in it now. Um, yeah, but it's so interesting. It's interesting to go back and look at some of these like I've got my notes in here and what I highlighted um, in school and such apparently this entire time this entire thing was very important oh yeah that's fair this is the song of the famous harper that's fair okay that's why i thought it was important okay um but yeah Classic. The other two classics I read not long after this one was I read Frankenstein by Mary Shelley and I read Dracula by Bram Stoker. I really enjoyed these. I thought this one was weird. Just weird. I thought Dracula was just kind of a strange book because it is kind of a strange book if you look back on it. It's really, it is really a weird book. And this one messed with me a little bit, but I enjoyed it. And I understood it a bit better, I think, than Dracula. But those two remain some of my favorite classics. The other classic that is... Excuse you. The other classic that to this day is still my favorite is The Count of Monte Cristo. But I lent someone in college my high school version of The Count of Monte Cristo with all of my notes in it. And I never got it back. And so... Yeah. Can I have it back, please? That'd be great. I miss that book. I miss my notes in it, too, because I had everything, like, all mapped out, like, who was who, and who was married to who, and whose child belonged to who. I had it all mapped out, man. I don't want to do it again. <laughs> the last two books, I guess. Um, the first one that I wanted to talk about was Mouse, which I also read in school. We actually read this one in middle school, in like eighth grade, I believe. Um, and this really kind of jump started my interest in World War II history, um, as well as in graphic novels, because this is a graphic novel, in case you didn't know. Um, but then the last book that I'm going to touch on is a special edition that I have kept for all these years, and it was a gift, actually, from my best, one of my best friends at the time, Will, and he got me the complete and unabridged Ultimate Hitchhiker's Guide by Douglas Adams. And this has, 
This has The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, The Restaurant at the End of the Universe, Life, the Universe, and Everything, So Long and Thanks for All the Fish, Young Zaphoid Plays It Safe, and Mostly Harmless, all in one. I never read all of them. I read all the way through, I think I started So Long and Thanks for All the Fish. Um, but this has fond memories of when my friends started to get me books too. <laughs> Instead of any other birthday or Christmas present, they just started giving me books and that is a very fond memory. So thank you for that, Will. There are some books here that I did not talk about. Um, as far as ones that really shaped my childhood, we can go as far back as to reading the Magic Treehouse series, reading the A to Z mystery series, and reading Hardy Boys. Those were probably the three main series that I read as a child um, because I read them as they came out, but I do not own any of them anymore. There are a couple, I believe, still at my parents' house, but yeah, I don't, I think those would be the main ones. I did not read Nancy Drew, must, much to most people's surprise. Um, nope, I, I read The Hardy Boys. I liked the Hardy Boys. I thought they were fun. Joe was my favorite. I liked Joe. Because <laughs> Frank and Joe were the two Hardy Boys. <laughs> I remember that. Um, right? Yeah, Frank and Joe. Uh, so, yeah. And Joe always got kidnapped. Poor Joe. He, he was always getting kidnapped. What the hell, dude? <laughs> you gotta look around every so often. <laughs> um... Yeah, I think that's all I got for you guys here today. So I would love to hear what some of the books that started your love for reading, what started your obsession with books. Um, I would love to hear if you read any of these when you were younger as well, how much I have aged myself by saying I read these as they came out, some of them as they came out. Um, but yeah, until next time, guys, um, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button down below. We post videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. And if you want to be reminded when we do, hit the little bell icon down below as well. And until next time, guys, I hope you stay safe, stay healthy, and keep reading. Bye!